they tried to just take the high road and not say a word. Mm -hmm. But when people on the internet again and whatever are saying, hey, how can Sammy and Dave both be wrong? Right. They had to respond and say, they're both lying. You know? right. But anyway, you know, to me again, with uh, Gary Sharon now, it's seamless again. We're just moving on. You right. know? Well, going back to those years um, with, with, with David Lee Roth, um, like again, as I. It's kind of an expensive you, name, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Um, Don't forget the diamond. Yeah, the diamond. No, actually, the diamond as well. Your first, that's what they have. That's, no, that's the first thing. This is yeah, No, that's the first no. set of neurotic behavior. First it was Dave, then it was Dave Roth, then it was David Lee Roth, then it became Diamond David Lee Roth. <laughs> I'm wondering what's next. Diamond David Lee Roth TV. <laughs> I gotta tell you, we, when we worked with these guys, we loved them, They're, they were great, and we had a lot of fun, you know? But just like in any relationship, sometimes things just go sour. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple. You know, it's both very talented. We had a lot of great times together, and I respect them both on a musical level. Right. Van Halen, through those years, started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, how much pressure was put on on you uh, as the songwriters, etc., to come up with the goods time and time again? I mean, you know, there was none at all. Not at all. No. I'd seen Ed suffer through, uh, you know, some tough periods. Where, yeah, but, where, but it's but not... That, but, but that wasn't because of the pressure from anybody. Yeah, yeah. It was, he was looking for something. Yeah, yeah. You know? we all are. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean? You know, you, you're always saying me. It's all of us. No, 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 but I meant... We sit around and we experiment. You know, we're still trying to get that elusive drum sound that we hear right. in our head. You know, really? it's just... Yeah. It's not about... It's not about topping yourself in a... In a commercial in sense. In a commercial... You know, in the public. Sure. Whatever. Hey, this record's better than that one. Hey, yeah, you yeah. know, to me... Uh, what, we got 13 records, you know? They're all like, I have we have 13 children. Right. They're all a little different, but I love them all, you know? Why I ask that, though, is, is that, that, I mean, here you are. And who's um, to judge what's better? Absolutely. You know? Um, I mean, the pressure was really on, but as far as, like, you'll go out touring all the time, and then you come back and do another major album, out it would come, back on the road again. Um, and you've uh, shone through all of that, Whereas new bands today tend to sort of have, I don't know, sort of some vulnerability and tend to almost disintegrate within, you know, a couple of years because either A, they can't take the pressure, B, it's something else. You know? I think what, what most people don't realise is that even though we made our first record in 1977, mm -hmm. which was released in 78, we were we together already, we, we for about been, seven years before that. Yeah, we were yeah. playing in bars, yeah. you know, five hours a night and, and, and that kind of thing. That's what mm. we do, you know, it's what we enjoy. Mm. And... Uh, so as far as pressure, no, the only pressure you put on, or that you get, is that you put on yourself. Right. When you try to drive yourself further. Can I ask you this, Ed? I mean, did you ever imagine, back then then, uh, that um, you'd be hailed as one of the greatest guitarists? Did you hope to be one day? No, it was not, I don't know, no. No? I still really can't relate. Really? It's like... Everybody's an individual, you know. It's my. Yeah. It's just the way I play. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it's a very strange. You see, you have to remember, Ed. I used to play guitar. Yeah. And Ed played drums. Mm. And to make a long story short, he got better, so I played his guitar. But the moment he picked up the guitar, it didn't take a genius to figure out that he had a connection with it. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know? it was, it was, was just kind of a natural thing for me. Yeah. Just like drums for you. And it's, it's, you know, I'm very grateful to be blessed with the gift, mm -hmm. and uh, I think if you take you know, your, if, you, if you take yourself too seriously, that's when it becomes yeah, a problem. Yeah, when you start thinking, yeah, mm. yeah, I'm a guitar hero. <laughs> you know, right? I really, I don't know. All right, dance the night away. What is a guitar hero? <laughs> dance the night away. <laughs> Dancing the night away, I guess. <laughs> Plan the night away. Dance the night away is a song that didn't turn out at all the way I imagined it in my head when I wrote it. Really? And I didn't like it at all either. <laughs> you never liked it. <laughs> Not in respect. That there's the it same way by Ed that the way that it's that wasn't it, the song was, didn't come out. But, it. but it doesn't really matter because no, it, it is what it is. It doesn't. It is you know? what it is. But anyway. you know what's funny is uh, we played a gig once with uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Black Sabbath. And I think uh, Sammy was actually on that gig. We, we parachuted into uh, oh, and uh, Stadium. And yeah. Stadium. Yeah. And you know, in a stadium, I mean, Sabbath music. 
really works well in stadiums. Yeah, it I mean, it's got the balls. And here it's we got are the playing. Fucking, and here we are playing Dance the Night Away. <laughs> when is this song ever going to end? There you go. Now let's play it faster. It'll be over with. Quicker. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> it just didn't end up. I don't know. I, 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 there's, there's one section there that's, that's kind of hooish. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted it to be, you know, sort of the Spanish yeah. twist. Yeah. to it, this Latin feel, this dance. You yeah. have to remember, though, you know, like, in the beginning, when you, when you start out, there are other people, there are a lot of other people involved in making a record, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's the producer or the, the record company. And we weren't and, as and involved we're not, as we should yeah. have. What, Unchained? Uh, let's see, that was... Uh, Fair Warning, it was uh, 80, 81? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 81, I think, yeah. Fair Warning was a, a rough time for the band in terms of... Uh, kind of a dark record. Yeah, it was, it was also a dark experience with uh, internally. Mm -hmm. uh, things that started to fall apart with Dave um, in terms of just being together as a band, you know. And Ed, as an outsider, I could see what Ed was going through. And he spent a lot of time making that record. Mm. And that's why at that point in time, or near that time, is when Ed decided, I'm gonna make my own studio. It was actually after Diver Down. Yeah, but it was, it's, it's, I know, okay. that was a setup. Yeah. That, that's, that's what Sequence it caused of the events. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair warning, I mean, I, I, I'd go down to Sunset Sound with Don Lanier, engineer, four o'clock in the morning, and do my guitar solos and, and do stuff, and the next day everybody would walk in, they didn't even know. Right. They thought we that I'd done it the day when everyone was there. But, but there was a lot of it they didn't know either. <laughs> regardless, it was, it was it was more of a guitar record, and it was uh, there was no quote unquote hit on it according to Warner Brothers. So it was probably the, the, the worst selling record out of the catalog, and I mean still want multi platinum, but there was no like. Right, you're talking about a dark period. Does it? Um, I mean, some people and um, songwriters sometimes can um, pull, pull from, from that. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think some of the greatest. Something. I think some of the greatest music is on that. On uh, uh, fair warning. Uh, fair warning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! I think every emotion, everything you feel, you know, depression, anger, everything comes out in the music, and sometimes that kind of stuff motivates you to really, you know, like you said. All right. The next one's jump. First song we recorded here. Yeah, it took Ed a long time to fight for that, but when they finally recorded it, they all just said, wow. Will said, well, Panama. What does that song mean <laughs> when you hear it? Because I don't understand a damn lyric. <laughs> it, had to do with, it had to do with the vibe. Of the Panama hat and smoking dope is what the song really is about. Right. You know? Is it? Well, yeah. And the rest of the stuff is just hot shoe burning down the avenue, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a little, little. My favorite part is uh, <laughs> we're sitting outside here, and Dave, Dave, wait, Dave was into this trip. You know, he goes, he goes. He's surprised too. He goes, no, he goes, he goes into all these, all these little things, all these uh, the latest craze, you know. Uh -huh. If they're skateboarding, he's got to have a skateboard. Well, Panama kind of had the vibe, and smoking the big, the big ganja right. was in at the time, and that's what the song's about. Well, he's still in Panama then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with uh, with this new era, with Sammy, was it hard at the start um, of having to nurse him through um, being, you know, the replacement of David Lee Roth? Uh, Can't ask never... him that. <clears throat> yeah. First of all, we never looked at him as a replacement. Yeah. You know, I think that's the biggest mistake. It's a psychological, it's... It, it was, was a new just, band. Yeah. It was a yeah. new band. That's yeah. all it was. Well, it's the same actually, band, new band. Different same, singer. Yeah, yeah. Same, yeah. Same, yeah. Just, <laughs> that's a good idea. No, really, uh, uh, he just... Same guy, just I, I, Same guy, just different wife, you know. <laughs> same guy, different motive. Anyway, uh, I'd, I'd spoken to him on a Friday, and he was here Monday. Mm. And funny thing is, he even said, I knew you were going to call me. Really? Yeah. Well, he was right, I did. You did indeed. But he showed up on a Monday and uh, we jammed uh, Summer Nights, Good Enough, uh, you yeah, know. Summer Nights was the first one. Yeah. And, hey, he could sing. You're in. Wow, that's simple. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, we've got to race through this. Dreams. Great song. Yeah, it is a great song. Right now? 
Uh, the music for that was written back in 83. Mm -hmm. And certain people just wanted nothing to do with it. So finally, Alex and I just tracked it, you know, and sang it. All right, Can't Stop Loving You. Uh, I think it was the last tune we wrote for the Balance record. Bruce asked, do you have any, you know, any, yeah. any pop things laying around? And, you know, we said, see what we can come up with over the weekend. And uh, that's what we come up, came up with. And now, Human Being? That was, uh, Alex and I went down and saw the Twister movie. Uh, he and the Bont asked us to, to do some music for right. it. And, you know, immediately, same day, I think we came back to the studio and uh, we're inspired by it. Out on the road again? The, oh, definitely. Yes. We're coming to Australia. Yeah. Is that a promise? I swear. Hey, look, look, hey, look. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. That's no, not no. a promise. That's a no. threat. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Hide your if sheep. we don't come sometime in 97, I'll give you my address. You can come over and kick my ass. We are coming. I tell you what, if you don't come over to Australia, we'll we send every kangaroo here in your Look. property and they hop around and you regret it. But anyway, no, we finally have the team together that sees eye to eye by mm. working and, you know, there's no, there's no attitudes anymore. We're yeah. all just normal schmoes, you know, we, we, we like to make, it's, it's, about, it's for the love of music. Okay. And what is music for? For people. So you play it for people. Yeah. Well, I, I want to go to Australia. I've never been there. I know. We you all know. know. <laughs> no, it's been a great ride. You know, um, we have friends there too. Baby animals are buddies. You mm -hmm. know, and yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're great. Yeah. Now, um, tell me. Finally, I mean, we talk about all of this, and you tell me, you know, there's this there. How much stuff is filed away um, that sure, sure we've never later. heard of? You know, I'll how much? You. How much do you think? <laughs> a lot. Probably about a hundred records worth. I'll just show you the tape library. And, th and this is just... It's scary. It's just part of it. Yeah. You know? I mean, just new stuff. We have enough for a couple, three albums. Mm-hmm. Mm. And whatever. Let's go in the other room. I'll show you. OK, thanks a lot. And that, you're definitely coming down. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even if I you come back be here there. with a gun, right, in that plane. You better be there. You're there. All right, no, I'll be there. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that interview with Eddie and Al. And I've got to tell you, after we'd finished the interview, uh, the boys took me into the control room and played me three new tracks. So watch out for the new Van Halen in 1997. In the meantime, check out Van Halen Best Of Volume 1 because there's some absolutely vintage Van Halen tracks on this album. OK, until next time, have a great new year, have a great holiday, and if you're uh, just cruising around the city, please play it carefully on the roads. Keep cool.